there's never been equipment that can see or find gold or silver under the sand until now. And that's going to change the industry sector forever. Well, everybody hears about the Treasure Coast, the remnants of a single fleet of ships, which was from 1715. There are multiple ships that sank at sea and were never found. And we're on the track of at least one of those shipwrecks now. The manifest of these ships were, were carrying millions and millions of, of current dollars in treasure. As far as I know, in, in my education, there's been nothing else like it ever developed across the world. I think this would be an invaluable asset. So one of the main challenges in shipwrecks and one of the ways that Seafarer is, is changing the game is a, a person who f believes they found a shipwreck could work that shipwreck site for years, even decades, and never find anything. So most of the time, I call that most treasure hunting is a binary activity. You pick a site and you work it and you work it and you spend millions of dollars working it and it either comes up with treasure or it comes up with nothing. So the whole purpose of the technology we're developing for Seafair is intended to reduce the cost of evaluating a site and determining whether or not there's precious materials on that site worth additional investment. If we can do that, that changes the nature of the, of the game for treasure hunting because you would go to a site, run the sea search or run the technologies over it, evaluate it, and then decide whether or not you're going to continue to invest in that site. Both, that's both important from a monetary perspective but also from a cultural resource perspective because if we can identify where the cultural resources are you're not damaging them by using blowers to blow holes in the sand or blow holes and, and damaging the artifacts you can actually go right to where the things that are the most interesting are and, and recover them so for example if you look at the uh, atosha um, which according to the record was in effect found by mistake it was found by accident. Um, a diver was swimming along, noticed an, an anomaly, reached in, and then all of a sudden noticed there were silver bars there. One of the challenges with all of these artifacts that have been on the ocean floor for centuries is that they become encrusted. We found wood with a half an inch of encrustation on it, shell encrustation on it. You find metals with encrustation. One of the few metals that doesn't tend to get encrusted is gold, but if it's inside something that can get encrusted, that gold could, get it, could uh, be in a container that's encrusted as well. If you're diving along on a mature uh, area, you may never see it. And like I said, these shipwrecks have melted into the ocean floor. So that's what they were doing. They were swimming along and not seeing it, where the sea searcher and the technologies that we're developing would have identified that there was silver right where they were, right where they were diving. And so it'll allow, it, and, it, and it gives them the position of it, and it gives them the approximate depth of it. So the idea of going from, I search an area with, whether it's a handheld metal detector and blowers or whatever they're using, to you're flying a, a drone along that's giving you locations of where to dig is, is a big change. On the Sea Searcher, when you look at a product development, a new product development, the, the couple of years that we have spent doing this is really not out of line with a typical product development. It's not certainly not out of line with a new technology uh, development. Typically those take years to a decade to, to fully mature. What I am so impressed with is the, the pace at which we can create a technology like this today, and if we hadn't been hampered by COVID, it would have been even faster, that involves pretty advanced signal processing, machine learning, um, imaging, uh, projections of 3D images. All of that is possible because of 
what I call the commoditization of, uh, of drones, of imaging and cameras, miniature cameras. We're taking advantage of all of those elements to create this. So we're creating something that would normally have taken a decade or more uh, let's say 10 years ago to something that was up and running in six months and has evolved, gone through two or three generations or evolutions over a couple of years. That simply would not have been possible a decade ago and certainly wouldn't have been possible two decades ago. So the pace at which technology is evolving today is exciting. The pace at which machine learning is, is evolving is exciting. So even the algorithms that took us um, a days to run a couple of years ago we're now doing in in under a second uh, to project uh, in real time the results that we're getting so all of that's really exciting and I think from a from a sensor perspective from a finding treasure perspective um, it's coming along exactly like we predicted it would uh, three years ago and maybe we're right on the edge of what the technology is supporting but it it's uh, it's getting there So, you know, obviously shareholders want you to find something big today. And in, in, in the shareholder world, you have a thousand customers that you're, that you're answering to on a, on a regular basis. You have to temper that with the realities of the sea state, you have the temperature, the, the technologies, the, the approach that you're taking, uh, and not turn it into uh, trying to force results uh, unnaturally. So what we do is we, we do take a very disciplined approach to the way we identify the sites, the way that we survey the sites, the way that we rule in or rule out a site or an area. And that has to be independent of a shareholder. You try to give them uh, uh, good feedback and good, but it has to, has to be a long game because ultimately this technology and the approach that we're using is based upon something that's repeatable. It isn't about one shipwreck, it's about doing it on multiple shipwrecks across decades of time that allows the company to have value. So one of the key things with Seafarer is it isn't just about what's happening in the water. There are several things that have to be done that are at play within Seafarer. The first is you have to be good at research. So you have to be good at your historic research because it's what gets you into the general area of where a shipwreck might be. It might tell you what's there. So Seafarer is, is very robust in our ability to do historic research. The second is you have to understand the regulatory element of this. So there are governments involved, there's permitting involved, and a company that does not understand the regulatory or compliance piece of what they're doing will ultimately fail and they'll get frustrated. We have some of the best at doing that regulatory piece that I've seen. I've done a lot of medical devices as well and just the regulatory element can, can devastate you if you don't know how to do it. Seafarer is extremely good at that regulatory piece. And the third thing is you have to have a portfolio of technologies. So while the Sea Searcher is a good tool at telling you where to dig, there has to be a set of technologies and, and that allow you to quickly evaluate each site, isolate it down, use tools like the Sea Searcher to pinpoint, and then you have to have tools for excavation. So for example, we have developed tools that allow us to work in, in uh, low visibility conditions. We have tools that allow us to dig in, in, in very small holes with cameras on them so we can tell whether or not there's something down below the surface. All of those go to a, a 360 degree view of this, of this uh, endeavor. And I'd say that's unique in what Seafair is doing over what other folks are doing that are perhaps working a site that may have been worked for 20 years where they're really in the final stages. They're not out searching, they're in the final stages of recovering a site. So, so we have all of the tools in place for uh, finding new shipwrecks and that's really one of our goals is to continue to find new shipwrecks.